Hello all, we were the group assigned to address diversity and inclusion here at CSUOT. The title of our presentation is From Conversation to Action, Creating Culturally Responsive OT Programs and Practitioners. I'm Mason, and later in this presentation you will hear my lovely group mates, Kalina, Dina, and Emily speaking. So to give you guys a quick run through of our agenda for this presentation, we're going to start off by talking about our prioritized needs. Then we're going to move on to implications for occupational performance and participation. We'll give you a glimpse of our logic model. Then we'll talk about program goals, objectives, outcomes, and evidence. And finally, we'll finish with the resources and inputs that we will need to make diverse OT a reality. Hi everyone, this is Kalina and I'll be discussing the prioritized needs of our project. Our OT631 project group was formed to identify opportunities to address diversity and inclusion within the CSU OT department. This project was actually initiated over the summer of 2020 out of discussions that arose between current first and second year students. As a part of our class, we performed a needs assessment and collected data from multiple sources to assess the needs of our OT program surrounding diversity and inclusion. We performed a search for literature and data related to these topics and also conducted a student focus group that had 10 participants and sent out a survey for self-identified minority students from which we received eight responses. From our needs assessment, we found that CSU OT students expressed a need to create a separate student group to focus on diversity and inclusion within the program and profession as a whole. There are multiple causes of our prioritized needs that arise from both within our CSU OT department and from the profession as a whole. On the left side of this slide, you can see race, ethnicity, and gender data from the 2019 AOTA Workforce Survey. In 2009, 88% of OTs identified as white. In 2018, you can see that 84% of OTs identified as white which is a slight decrease from 2009. While the percentage of OTs who identify as white has decreased in the last five years, you can see that the percentage of African American slash Black and American Indian slash Alaskan Native practitioners also decreased. There was a modest increase in Hispanic slash Latinx OTs in the last five years. The OT profession is predominantly white and female. CSU OT admissions data from the last few years shows a similar trend to that of the overall profession. While 30% of applicants come from minority backgrounds, 90% of students who attend the CSU OT program identify as white. There is a gap between the number of diverse applicants who are applying to our program and those who are admitted to our program. Our data collection during our needs assessment showed that students and faculty express a strong desire for hands-on learning about diversity and inclusion to create an inclusive environment within our program. Students also identified a gap between the theories surrounding diversity and inclusion that they learn in the current curriculum and issues that they see in practice. Data from our needs assessment leads us to believe that a separate student group would create a necessary safe space to discuss culturally diverse issues in an action-oriented environment. So what is the impact of our prioritized need? Our prioritized need impacts CSU OT students, our faculty and staff, and future clients once we become OT practitioners. CSU OT must address diversity and inclusion to enable our profession to advocate for the health and well-being of diverse populations. Research has shown that healthcare disparities are apparent for racial and ethnic minorities and economically disadvantaged populations. Additionally, a lack of diverse perspectives and experiences hinders the quality of care for our diverse clients, which can contribute to poor lifelong health outcomes, decreased occupational performance, and ultimately less participation in daily occupations.
special needs map. So here is the logic model our group has created to represent our project. Um, we will go more in depth on some of these areas in the following slides. This slide covers some of the deliverables that will be achieved through each program objective we laid out. Outputs of our student initiative will be diversity salons open to sharing experiences and processing new learning, guest lecturers, fundraising efforts to support diverse OT events, and the dissemination of information and sharing of resources with the CSU OT community beyond group members. The outcome of this will be a creation of a safe space for discussing um, diversity, equality, and inclusion issues at CSUOT. Outputs of our student faculty initiative are, as Dina said, a student board to review cur curriculum for issues of representation and diversity, monthly communication with the faculty advisor, and recommendations for how to intentionally diversify program admissions. The outcome of this will be increased focus on diversity and inclusion in the curriculum. Finally, our community initiative outputs will be resources to support underrepresented students in their pathway to OT school, increased relationships within the College of Health and Human Sciences, and community partnerships within the college, as well as CSU and the surrounding community for outreach. The outcome of this will be improved student confidence in delivering culturally responsive care.
The resources we've identified to implement the program are firstly seed funding for $500 to cover initial startup costs with the opportunity for additional grant funding to be applied for by group board members at a later date. Secondly, one to two faculty advisors. Um, we are requesting multiple advisors to decrease the time burden that will come with starting a new organization, as well as to increase the ability for the advisors to advocate for the group on more sensitive topics. Three, space for member and board meetings, which will be coordinated and scheduled around existing organizational meetings um, to limit overlap. And finally, the largest input, student and faculty time and participation, which will be tiered based on group member role um, with board members having the largest time commit commitment for planning group action and events to hopefully allow for um, membership across groups so that members aren't limited to just one student organization within CSUOT.